Welcome to our how to make a pinch pot. Let's go. So we're going to start with a basic um, technique with clay. This is one of the first things that you learn in a clay class. Mm -hmm. um, what we're working with today is just a basic um, uh, white clay. Clay comes in different colors just like soil comes in different colors. Mm -hmm. So you can fire and have a terracotta effect from a red clay or you can fire and have a white effect from a lighter colored clay. And that's what we're working with today. Now this comes from a chunk of clay and so usually when you have the chunk of clay you don't have to work it too much. It's already without the air in it and that's something you want to remember when you're building with clay. Now this is clay that's going to be dried in a kiln. You can also work with air dry clay. I find Crayola, the little kids Crayola air dry clay works the best as far as that goes. Right. And of course you have the oven fire clay. So basically when you're making a pinch pot, all we are literally talking about doing is pinching the center of the pot from your rounded piece of clay. Okay. And what you want to think about doing you know, anytime you're working with making um, some kind of pottery, which, you know, a pot would be considered pottery, um, ceramics is, you know, very oh, similar. Can start with mine? You can, so yes. Okay, okay. So make a ball. Okay, so when you make, make a, a nice ball, ball work. Okay, so made a ball. You've made your ball, and now literally all you have to do is stick your thumb in the center. Okay. One thumb, just drive it down to make a hollow and then you just start to work it. And you can really make this pot however you want. What typically they look for with ceramics is um, consistency. So you want the wall of your pot or your cup uh -huh. or your bowl to be um, the same thickness throughout is what you're looking for. So see, we wanted to keep this simple, right? This is something you can do at home. Okay, you, sure. You literally could go make clay out of the dirt in your yard if you wanted to, if you were that committed. But just to keep it simpler, simple, and also, you know, every, um, um, begin, you know, every level of, ability so even a little kid can make a pinch pot you know right. even an adult can take a pinch pot and turn it into something really cool right, right so the other things that you can think about doing these are some of the tools that we use with clay okay um, these are typically used for with pottery on a wheel but it can also be used for hand building and technically what this is called is a hand building technique okay. um, that's primarily what I do is hand hand building but I do sculpture Right. Um, you want water because you can use some water to re-moisten your clay. You want to keep your clay a little bit moist okay. as you're working with it. So um, this here, I'm wondering, is it like art that's also functional? I can use it as like a, I mean, I don't know, maybe a, a change. Like maybe yes. I have some extra change and I use it as kind of like a change collector. Absolutely, like you that. could. You could use it as a ring ring bowl. You could take the make a little column to put in the center mm -hmm. to be, you know, the, hold your rings in place. Right. Absolutely, that's functional. Um, most clay is food grade as well, so you could literally drink out of it. Where you have to be careful is with your glazes. You want to make sure that you're using, if you're going to use that for something, like if you're making yourself, you could literally turn this pinch mug into, or this pinch pot into a mug mm -hmm. by adding a handle. Make it deeper and add a handle. Okay, yeah. And what you want to be careful of, if you want that to be functional, where you're actually going to drink some coffee or some hot chocolate out of it, is right. making sure that the glaze that you're using is food grade. So this, um... I mean, so next, what would be our next step? So I feel like I've kind of created my pot here. So if you're happy where you are, you can take a tool out of my cup. Okay. These are the used tools. These are nice, neat, but it just lets you know what to look for. You can find these supplies at most stores that sell art supplies. Every, every place from Walmart to um, Hobby Lobby to Michaels typically carries. That's actually the an old paintbrush. So you can actually, you, you know, I have a pencil in there that I'll use. You can use the tip of a pencil. You can use spoons. You can use whatever you want to create a design. Right. So think about um, whatever kind of design you want. Like if you want an angled design, you could use a spatula. Right. Right. To give that little triangle point. If you want a round design, obviously using this um, paintbrush, which is about the condition of most of my paintbrushes because I am horrible <laughs> yeah. on my paintbrushes. 
Um, <laughs> and I think that's because I'm a clay artist, and so painting is kind of my secondary. And a lot of people, when they think of art, they think only of painting. So I think this is like a cool way to introduce something new that they've never maybe considered. Yes. I feel like I've made mine. Okay, so now that I have a design, I pretty much just put some like circles inside. Yes. And made the edge kind of like a crust. Maybe I'm hungry, like lunch, right? <laughs> <laughs> In the back of my mind, I'm thinking about lunch. But okay, so now I've got my design. I've got my pizza crust type of thing going on here. So now what would you recommend? So if you're you satisfied with how it looks and mm -hmm. you're and you're happy because you know you would be surprised once this is fired and you add a little color to it, you can make that look really funky. You can make that look like a really cool avant-garde piece of art if you want to. So what you do now is you put it aside okay. in a place that has I don't like too cold a room or too warm a room. So just a you know a good lukewarm, um, maybe seventy degree room where there's not not any direct air blowing on it. Mm -hmm. And I'll be happy to put that in my studio space for you and let that dry. Right. And then I can fire that for you. And then if you want to paint it, you can paint it with alcohol ink. You can use oil colors, you oil paint. You can use uh, acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do. Wow, awesome. It can be a tool of mindfulness, right? Where you're you're physically doing something and you feel like you're being productive, but you can also let yourself process stuff throughout the day. And there's something important. Okay, this is the therapy part of myself. <laughs> yeah. There's something important about being physically active while you're trying to process your thoughts. It helps us to not stay stuck in our thoughts. It helps us to move through. Um, it also helps us to have, it's almost a Zen practice, right? It's the Zen garden or, or the, the um, oh, what are the trees? The, the Zen trees, you know, where you just cut a little bit bonsai. of time. Bonsai. Bonsai yeah. trees, thank you. Yeah. Um, there's something about that. It's the tactileness, too, of art that I think is so powerful of keeping us in our body. So it's keeping us in our body in the present moment. Mm -hmm. which is very relaxing and can allow us to let go of some of those anxiety thoughts and um, depression thoughts and, you know, the stuff that troubles us. Right. And right now with so much going on in the world, do you feel like art is a good therapy for that or yes. a good outlet? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, as a therapist and having practiced lots of different techniques with people, I think art is the technique for helping with everything. Um, not just for helping you process, but it's also a firm form of expression. It's a form of having your voice, which is so powerful now more than any time ever in history. And what it allows you to, because there's just something about making something, right? Mm -hmm. That is hope, right? So I'm making something because I trust that I can finish it. That's hope, that's what hope is about. Art is hope in practice. So yes, I think, <laughs> I humbly say that yes, art is very therapeutic and it's very healing.